Hi everyone, it's Jan, and you know that recently I have been having so much fun with my gelatos, and I wanted to see what else I could use them with, and so I, um, I'm going to show you how we made this card, because I found out that my gelatos play nicely with my Copic markers. Now, if you don't know if something's going to work well or not, here's a good way to test it. Take your colorless blender and just put it against whatever the other medium is. Is it watercolor or ink or, or something else? And if you're, the nib of your colorless blender comes back clean, then you know they're going to play well with each other. And if they don't, then you can clean that nib pretty easily. So let me show you how I made this card. I'm starting with some purples. I've got one that's metallic grape. I love these gelatos. They are so creamy. They have such high pigment in them. There's so many techniques that you can do. And I'm, I'll am i be back in... Um, a few days to share with you a couple of other things that I've discovered that you can do with them. But this is my um, background technique where I use a color family, like I'm using the purples, but then I add a contrast to it, a color that is one shade away. Blue is next to purple on the color wheel, so it'll give us a nice little interaction, but give the eye something to contrast against. So I'm just putting my, once I spritz them with water, I they melt. That's really cool. And I'm just putting my watercolor paper down in there. And you can see we get really interesting layers of, of color because we had all those different colors mixed together and in between you want to dry them and you can see we've got that blue going there and um, some of the purple for the purpose of this card I think I want it to be a little bit more muted on the background so I'm going to put a lot more water I'm not going to add any additional pigment from the gelatos but you can see when I add water to my paper and put it back down into the watered down, you get a much lighter um, bit of color on there. And I'm going to dry it. And now I can layer up until I get just the right amount of color. So while I have the gelatos down, you can see I ended up with four really cool backgrounds. And I'm going to show you something fun to do with these darker ones in another video. But for this particular um, project. I wanted to use the lighter ones and I wanted there to be a little bit of white space in there. I think that it it helps your um, your image to pop if there's contrast between that. So I'm going to work with this one and the first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out which colors of my Copics work the best. With it, And the best way I know to do that is to take your Copic color chart and actually put what you're trying to match up next to it. So I'm picking some greens and I'm picking some of the, the violets and I, I went with the violet, not the blue violets. So this is a Stampendous um, stamp set and I'm using my Memento Tuxedo Black and I'm going to stamp it a couple of times. I would not use this if I were going to be painting with the gelatos because it is a water-based dye ink and adding water to it would make it blurry. But since we're moving into um, putting Copics on top of our gelatos, it will work great to use what we usually use. So I'm pulling out a couple of greens and I'm going to start with the medium green and just kind of go over these lines, these stems and the leaves. And I am not, this particular project is not one that I'm doing a huge amount of detailed Copic coloring. I am kind of filling it in. I'm not spending a lot of time blending or shading. I'm just, um, just going over the lines and filling in the leaves. Particularly because this is such a loose line art um, 
image. I think that it really lends itself to this little technique that I'm, I'm going to show you. And I am using a lighter color of green for the leaves. And then I will go back and, and maybe add a little bit of the darker color in to um, give you some visual contrast there. But again, you can see I'm, I am just moving through coloring these really quickly. You will still get the wow factor because they do such true colors on top of the gelatos. Loved, love the look that you get. And I, I love the turquoise and aqua colors that I did, but I actually really ended up loving these, this purple version as well. So you see, I'm just going back in and putting a little bit of flicking just a little bit of color in on the leaves just to give some contrast to them, give them a little bit of shading, but so not um, worrying too much about it. So here's what I'm doing. On this particular, this line art is very, very, very loose. And all I'm doing is I'm not coloring all of it in. I'm starting with the lightest color and I'm just putting a few little flicks around each of those flowers so that there will be some of that lightest color and then I'm going in with my second lightest color and just finding a few of those petals on the, the rows that I want to fill in but you can see I'm not blending at all I'm just laying these three colors in um, all the way around and it it ends up, because this is not an image that you need to do um, shading and all of that, if you saw them out in, in your garden, you would probably just kind of see these, these three colors interacting with each other. So you can see, super, super simple. This is a great card to mass produce because you can work on multiple backgrounds with your gelatos. And then the color time on this is almost non-existent. You can do these little swipes of color very, very, very easily. I think another line image that would be great for this would be if you wanted to use like maybe a butterfly or maybe one of those detailed butterflies that um, is out there. I think that would be fun to um, add to that as well. And then I decided I wanted to do a little shadow and because we're using lavender and I want my shadow to be cool I'm going with a very um, I think I'm going with blue violet probably 20 or 22 and I'm putting a little shadow under the leaves it's going to give you the the illusion of depth but it isn't going to read like a standalone shadow. And you know me, I have to put a little little shine on it. So I got my Wink of Stella pen out and just touched it all over um, the flowers. So super simple. I am using a greeting from Min Paper Tray Inks Mini Blooms. And I'm going to stamp it on both of them. Just a fun hello there greeting. You see I have my mouse pad down. I just find I get a better impression particularly on sentiments and detailed things if I have my my mouse pad down. It just gives you a little extra give in your stamping. I'm going to add a little bit of um, this purple ink and then on the other one I will use um, I think I'm going to use peacock feathers over on the other one but it gives a nice defined finished edge I really think when you are doing kind of a tone on tone or monochromatic um, focal image for the front of your card to give their a definitive edge works really well helps your card look look finished I'm going to use a piece of Paper Tray Inks Limeade Ice as my card base. It's a really nice, fresh color of green that will work well with both of these cards. I'm making a standard A2 side card. Um, so I just took one eight and a half 
by 11 piece of paper and split it down the middle and scored it to make my my card bases and like I said these are really quick to come together I cut the focal image down just a little bit so you could have a small mat of that limeade ice behind it and really quickly I have several cards um, completed. Well, almost completed because I have to wanted to make it line up a little bit better. And we're almost done. Super, super, super simple. Love both color combinations. I think a monochromatic card um, is a great look for a simple card like this. And you can see here with these close-up images, you can see that the lack of blending actually gives depth to the flower. And each background is gonna to be totally unique because we made it with our gelatos. These are fun cards. I hope it's a, it's a, a fun technique, easy technique. Let me know um, if you try it out for yourself. Super fun, would love to see what you made. I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. That's the best way you can find out when I have a new tutorial to share with you. And as I have been sharing, please follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. On Instagram, I have started a hashtag that is on my desk right now. It's O M. D R N O M D R N and that hashtag is what's on my desk right now it's a way I can share with you what I'm working on tutorials will come a little bit later but it lets lets us talk about what I'm in the middle of thank you again for um, coming and hanging out with me I hope you have a great week and be sure and save some time for creative play I'll see you soon